Now don't worry about these level-headed losers. No one can see me but you. You possess a special untapped talent for unhinged insanity. All that matters at the moment is infusing some entertainment into this dreadfully dull bloodshed. I can teach you a trick that will swing the war in your alliance's favor while bringing a smile to the ever-changing face of your favorite Daedric Prince. Alright everybody, welcome back to Creative Excuses. This is our gaming channel where we make excuses out of gaming instead of vlogs and photography and other stuff. Uh, today we are covering a new build. We are covering uh, one of my favorite builds that I've ever made. I've only made a few and you've only seen one, but this one is really fun. So let's jump into it. All right, so let's start with the theme of this build because that is a really important part of this build. This is a Templar, first off. That's the class, if you didn't see that in the title. This is a Templar, and it is Sheogorath's Knight of Madness. Knight as in like a shining knight, but a mad one. So the inspiration for this build is actually how ultimates, light attacks, and a few other abilities work. Uh, namely, that we're going to use stats the wrong way. Normally, when you think of a Magicka build with a staff like this character has, you're thinking of a Magicka character. They're a mage, they have a bunch of Magicka, they hit with spells, they hit with whatever, and they use spell critical and spell damage and Magicka to scale their abilities. And this character does not do that. This character, this Knight of Madness, if you will, uses stamina. This is a stamina mage. So what do I mean by that? I mean she uses specifically abilities that are scaling off of our highest offensive stats because there's a really important detail that they don't let you know in the game about, about things that scale off your highest offensive stats and that is that they scale off all of your highest offensive stats. When you read the word scaling, what you usually think of is weapon damage and spell damage or stamina and magicka. But what they don't tell you is that these are not the only offensive stats that apply to abilities that scale off of the highest offensive stats. Weapon critical also applies and spell critical also applies and so does weapon and spell penetration. Whichever is the higher of the values is the one that is applied uh, to some limits. I have not actually tested if you mismatch spell penetration with high weapon damage and high stamina. However, I have tested that weapon penetration will apply to a lightning staff heavy attack if you have the higher weapon penetration and you're scaling your light and heavy attacks off of your weapon damage and stamina. So the premise of the build is that we're gonna be using these abilities. We're gonna be using a magical ultimate, a magical heavy attack, and one magical uh, and very powerful damage over time, area of effect damage over time that all scale off of our highest offensive stats. There are some other abilities that do this, like Consuming Trap. However, because I'm a Templar and I will still be using Jabs, though not as a spammable, that means Consuming Trap is not worth it. We'll get into that when we get to the, the abilities. All right, so let's get into the stats. So we've got 64 points in a stamina because we are a stamina build. We have 18,000 max Magicka, 22,400 max health and 29,400 max stamina. This is with the tri-stat food, and we have the Thief Mundus to raise our crit up. Weapon damage, we've got about 4,000 weapon damage. However, this goes up when we buff up. This goes up to about 4,700, and when we're fully buffed, this will sit around 5,000. Uh, weapon critical is 33%. However, once we use jabs, once we use jabs, you can see that it goes up to about 45%. Uh, penetration, we're sitting at 5,400 penetration. However, we do have caltrops, so this will go up to about 11,000. 
but we'll get there with the abilities. Our stats look like this because we are using a tri-stat food in order to boost that max magicka pool even though we are a stamina build. Our recoveries are low because this is a heavy attack build and you'll see how it works when we get there. All right, let's get into the bread and butter of this build, the skills. This is what is going to define the Knight of Madness. So we are a Templar. I thought it fit the theme, so that's what I chose. There are other classes that have abilities that scale off their highest offensive stats, and those ones would also make interesting options. And in the future, I may explore those. However, for now, we're going to stick with this Templar. So our first ability on the bar is Biting Jabs. This is the standard and the class defining skill for Templars. With it, you launch a Relentless Assault, striking enemies in front of you four times with your Adric Spear. The spear deals 3,000 physical damage to the closest enemy and hits in an area of effect for less damage. It also gives you Major Savagery, increasing your weapon critical by 2629. We'll get into this with the rotation, but this is not your main spammable. You are a heavy attack build. This does give damage, however, this is a buff ability. And you'll see how that works soon enough when we get into the sets. The second part, the second ability on the bar, is the true defining skill for this class, or for this build rather, and that is Solar Barrage. Conjure solar energy to blast enemies around you, dealing 1300 magic damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. It's very low damage because it does scale off of your magic stats. However, the important part here is that while this ability is active, you gain Empower, increasing the damage of your light and heavy attacks by 40%. This is going to make our heavy attacks hit very hard, especially once you see what sets we're using. Our third ability is Razor Caltrops. This one is our Protections debuff, and it just got a buff in the Blackwood chapter, and that hits quite a bit harder than it used to. That is 300 damage a tick higher than it was when I used this build to clear veteran Vodish Front Hollows. So you're going to hurl a ball of Caltrops that scatter over the target area, dealing 1200 physical damage every one second to enemies inside, and reducing their movement speed by 50%. The important part is that enemies who take damage from the Caltrops have Major Breach applied to them, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 6000 for 4 seconds, which means this is actually a 14 second debuff. This is a 14 second debuff. The next ability is our Resolving Vigor. This is actually a flex spot for a heal of your choice. Uh, this Resolving Vigor is a very nice burst heal, 16,000 health over 4 seconds, and you'll see if we buff up. Almost 18,000, and that is not entirely buffed either. That's pretty high. That is a very good burst heal. You pop this, you dodge roll, you'll be full health. It's fantastic. However, you can replace it with Restoring Light, which is now a heal, or Restoring Focus, which is now a heal, where you create a Rune of Celestial Protection and gain Major Resolve for 20 seconds, increasing your Physical Resistance and Spell Resistance by 6,000. So it's an armor buff as well. You also recover 242 stamina every one second, and Standing Within the Rune heals you for 1344 health every one second, which scales off of your max health the wrong button so you stand in this you get 1400 health a second it is a long heal over time however uh i prefer the resolving vigor it means i have to push two buttons on my back bar when i go back to it however uh it does work this is an option okay our last skill on the bar is ritual of retribution this is another theme defining skill here and with it you're going to Exalt in the sacred light of the Adra, cleansing up to two harmful effects from yourself immediately, which is very handy if there's a strong damage over time on you or something. While in the area, enemies take 2931 magic damage every two seconds for 12 seconds, which increases by 5% per tick. This means that every time it deals damage, it increases in damage, so the longer it's up, the more damage it does. If you can, you want to apply it as soon as it's done, but not beforehand, though that's sometimes difficult. Now remember that key at the bottom there, this ability scales with your highest offensive stats. Alright, and the last ability on the board is our ultimate. This is Crescent Sweep from the Adric Spear skill line for the Templar. Swing your Adric Spear around with Holy Vengeance, dealing 8,350 magic damage to all nearby enemies, and an additional 4,000 magic damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. So this hits pretty hard. 
but enemies in your path, so in front of you, will also be hit for 60% more damage. So it hits quite hard and it is very cheap. It's a nice burst ultimate, very helpful in veteran Vatashran Hollows for dealing with the Void Tether, the ring of death that kills you. What this, what this ability here doesn't say is that it scales off your highest offensive stats. This is standard for ultimates. All ultimates scale off of your highest offensive stats, whether they're magic or stamina, magic or physical or poison or flame or shock or whatever. They scale off your highest offensive stats no matter what. So if I wanted to, because I have a destruction staff equipped, I could equip the destro staff ult. Either morph of it, I was testing this one. It's not great, go with the other one. All right, let's get on to the back bar. So the back bar, as this is a simple bar build, is purpose built. All of my builds that I'll, that'll be on my channel are simple bar builds, at least for the time being. So this back bar serves one purpose, and that is defenses. However, I'm not gonna neglect it. I am going to use one or two buffs on the bar, depending on what I need. But this is a two-hander, and with it, we're gonna use Brawler. Focus your strength into a mighty swing, dealing 5,885 physical damage to enemies in front of you. You also gain a damage shield that absorbs 5,600 damage for 6 seconds. Each enemy hit increases the damage shield strength by 50%. So if you are feeling in trouble on the front bar, which uh, when we get to the passes I'll explain why you rarely will feel that way, but if you feel like you're getting in trouble you can switch over to the back bar, slap a brawler, and then You'll use Rally, which is our next ability, and you'll be sitting pretty with full health again and damage shield on. So, Rally. Focus your strength and resolve to gain major brutality, increasing your weapon damage by 20%, as well as gaining minor endurance, increasing your stamina recovery by 15% for 20 seconds. And you heal 4,000 health when Rally ends. The final heal is increased by 15% every one second, up to a maximum of 300%. So, if you leave this up, the maximum duration or however long if you push it again if you activate the ability again it will heal you early it's a big burst heal it's very nice when you reapply it and helps you stay alive All right, now we got restoring focus we already went over this ability i do have it on the back bar just in case i need it if i need that armor buff i can just push rally i can push restoring focus and then i can swap back to the front bar resolving vigor is double barred as this is a defensive bar and it wouldn't be much of a defensive bar without a good Burst heal, I realize that I have rally, so this is a little bit redundant. However, I like having it here, and the back bar doesn't see much use anyway. The last ability is specifically for Vatashran Hollows, or PvP if that's your thing, and this is Explosive Charge from the Adric Spear skill line. Charge with your Divine Lance to impale all enemies in the area, dealing 3800 magic damage. The important part here is any enemy hit that is casting is interrupted, set off balance, and stunned for 3 seconds. This is important for Vatashran Hollows, for me specifically, because Flame Shapers are a pain in the butt, and I fail to interrupt them and target them correctly when I want to interrupt them, so having this area of effect interrupt is very nice. It is important, this is an area of effect interrupt, so if you hit the wrong enemy but you're near the Flame Shaper, they will still get interrupted, it's super handy. Alright, and the last ultimate here, our last ability here is the Solar Disturbance Ultimate from the Dawn's Wrath skill line. Call down a Fragment of the Sun, dealing 4300 magic damage every 1 second for 10 seconds to enemies in the area and applying Major Maim to them for 12 seconds, reducing their damage done by 10%. An ally near the Fragment can activate a synergy that deals some damage. For a solo build, the synergy there doesn't matter. However, the Major Maim is very nice on a defensive bar, allowing you to call this down and take 10% less damage. Super helpful, super fun, but doesn't see much use because again, we have a lot of damage mitigation on the front bar and we will get into that next. All right, so I don't wanna spend a ton of time on the passives. However, it is important. A few of them are very important. So let's start with Adric Spear as these are very good. So this first one increases your critical damage by 10% when you have an Adric Spear ability slotted. This is fantastic. It's just a free minor force buff. Go ahead and grab it. Spear Wall, this is a very important one and part of why we're going to have so much damage mitigation on our front bar, and that is gain minor protection for 6 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 5%. For 6 seconds, okay? When we cast Biting Jabs, which we'll be casting fairly often, 
it gives you the weapon critical buff major savagery for eight seconds so these are very close you're going to use your biting jabs to keep up spear wall at all times to reduce all the damage you take by five percent super helpful burning light this applies to biting jabs as well when you deal damage with an atrix spear ability four times in rapid succession you will deal 4700 this when buffed up will go up to about 5k i believe Yeah, 5,200 physical damage or 3,000 magical damage, whichever is higher. So this scales off your highest offensive stats as well. And then Balanced Warrior increases weapon damage by 6% and your spell resistance by 2640. It's a weird passive, but it's super helpful. Go ahead and pick it up. On Dawn's Wrath, the most important passive here is Enduring Rays. This is going to increase the length of your Solar Barrage ability by 2 seconds to get you to that 10 second mark. Grab that, and the rest of these are also good. This one, especially Restoring Spirit, reduces the health, magic, stamina, and ultimate cost of your abilities by 5%. Super helpful. These are the two best ones. The two in the middle are good. Generating more ultimate is good, and giving Minor Sorcery to your group is also helpful. You do technically benefit from this Minor Sorcery buff when you cast Solar Barrage. However, it's only benefiting your Solar Barrage, so it's not, it's not the most important thing here. Lastly, we've got Restoring Light. The most important thing here is Sacred Ground. While standing in your own Cleansing Ritual, Rune of Focus, or Rite of Passage areas, and for up to 4 seconds after leaving them, you gain Minor Mending, increasing your healing done by 8%. Also increases the amount of damage you can block for the duration. This is fantastic because you are almost always going to be fighting inside your giant circle from your Ritual of Retribution and I pissed off a mud crab. This is the most important one. The rest of these, we're not using any healing abilities from this line, so they're not super helpful. Go ahead and skip those. All right, I did forget to mention that two of your most important passives are in the, the Destruction Staff skill line. The first of these is Trifocus, and that is because we're using a Lightning Staff on the build for this heavy attack build. Lightning Staff attacks damage nearby enemies for 100% of the damage done. This makes your area of effect damage with your Lightning Staff nutty, especially with the sets that we're using that we'll get into later. Uh, this is very important. Pick this up as soon as you can on the build. The second passive is down here, Ancient Knowledge. Equipping a Lightning Staff increases your damage done with area of effect abilities by 8%. This affects basically everything we're doing except for the heavy attacks. The heavy attacks actually count as single target damage, we'll talk about that in the champion points. But this does affect our biting jabs, we're buffing this by 8%. Interestingly, in cases where your crit chance and crit damage are not sufficiently high, a lightning staff is better than dual wield daggers for the biting jabs ability specifically. Uh, the lightning staff passive is also going to buff our solar barrage by 8%, our caltrops by 8%, our ritual retribution by 8%, and our Crescent Sweep by 8%. So this is quite a significant buff, so you're gonna to wanna to pick this up as soon as possible as well. Penetrating Magic, not super necessary. And Elemental Force, also not super necessary as we're not using anything that can trigger elemental status effects on the build. This, I have not tested whether or not this applies to the Sundered status effect, which is a physical status effect. I'm not sure. You can test that on your own if it does, Cool. If it doesn't, this is uh, not necessary, and you can save two skill points in both of these. The other passives that you're going to want are from the two-hander skill line, and from here, you'll want the first three especially. The last two are not as necessary, as you're not going to be killing very many enemies on your two-hander bar, and you're not going to be heavy attacking on that bar very often either, though this is useful if you are, because you can heavy attack in between brawlers for sustain. It's nice if you need to use it for defense, however, I've not needed it so far. We are a medium armor build, so we're going to pick up everything except for improved sneak, unless sneaking is your thing. Grab all of these, they're fantastic. If you are using any heavy armor, make sure you pick up your heavy armor passives as well. They provide some nice bonuses, and same for light armor. However, we are a 7 medium armor build. Fighter's Guild passives, these are nice if you're using a Fighter's Guild ability. You will generate more ultimate if you have one on the bar. However, they are not needed. So you can skip these passives and abilities if you would like. 
Undaunted, if you have maxed out your Undaunted, make sure you pick up Undaunted Metal for the extra stats. Even though it's only 2% or 4 to 6% if you're doing a 5-1-1 or a 6-1 build. Alliance War, we're going to pick up Continuous Attack. Mostly because Major Gallop is nice and we already have Caltrop, so we've done the work. Let's just get it. Alright, now that we've done the rest of the passives, let's jump into the race. We are a High Elf, and there is a very good reason for this. The first one is that with the Flames of Ambition patch, they added weapon damage to the High Elf, making this effectively as good, almost as good as an Orc at being a Warrior. So the weapon damage is super helpful. However, we're also getting 2000 Max Magicka, which is great for our sustain on the Magicka side, because even though we're heavy attacking, some of the Templar abilities are kind of expensive, like 4600, and we're not using any cost redu reducing armor, so this is very helpful in case we need to cast more than one of these. The last one is Spell Recharge, and this is a big one. When you activate an ability, you restore 625 Magicka or Stamina based on whichever is lowest. This effect can occur once every six seconds. This is really nice sustain. However, it's not the main point of this passive. On this build, when you are using an ability with a channel or cast time, you take 5% less damage. That is the same as minor protection and it stacks on top of it. So when we are jabbing like that, you are taking 5% less damage from your high elf passive and from minor protection. So you're taking 10% less damage. That is a, an enormous amount of damage mitigation. You are also using the same passive when you use a staff, a lightning staff heavy attack. When you are channeling a lightning staff heavy attack like this, except on a target, you know, you're also taking that 5% less damage. So, when we jump into the rotation, you'll see how this works, but we are taking 10% less damage almost at all times on this build, which is super nice. Generally, we're going to use a tri-stat food. If you are doing something relatively easy, you can get by easily with the purple tri-stat food, either a crown fortifying meal that you get for free every month, or whatever you want, really. Any of the purple tri-stat foods work just fine. If you are doing something sweatier and you want the extra health recovery, the Witch Sugar Skulls are a fantastic option. For our potion, Tristat potions are very helpful as they're going to help your health recovery, magic recovery, and stamina recovery, as well as give you a nice flood of resources when you use it. However, they are unnecessary. We do have both our major brutality and major savagery buffs, so we can just run trash stamina potions, restoring 6,000 stamina immediately and granting major endurance. I do not have the Medicinal Use path passive unlocked, and I do not have sustain issues on this character. You can, however, use the Medicinal Use passive, of course, from the Alchemy Tree, and boost the length of this and have even better sustain. Last, but certainly not least, we have to go through the sets for this Heavy Attack build, and they are off meta and fun. So let's do it. All right, so the first set that I'm gonna look at is a one piece set, and then we'll look at another one piece set, and we'll go from there. We're gonna use the Krog's Mask for that 1435 physical penetration. This is nice because penetration is hard to come by, especially when you're doing something funky like this build. The second one piece that we're gonna use to make our two piece, our nice two piece set instead of our monster set is the Ring of the Pale Order. Restores 20% of the damage you deal as health. You cannot be healed by anyone but yourself. Because this is a solo build, this does not matter that we can't be healed by anyone else unless you want to use a companion, but the Ring of the Pale Order is generally better anyway, unless you get really good companion gear, so don't worry about it. Ring of the Pale Order, we're going to leave it as Bloodthirsty and we're going to en enchant it with weapon damage. Okay, so our first five piece set that we have on the weapons is the Lightning Staff of the Undaunted Infiltrator in the sharpened trait. The Undaunted Infiltrator adds a line of max stamina, another line of max stamina, some weapon critical, very good stats for our stamina damage dealer, and more, most importantly, when you use an ability that costs magicka while in combat, you increase the damage of your light and heavy attacks by 1600 
for 10 seconds. That 10 second buff aligns perfectly with our solar barrage. So it only activates while you're in combat. So if I hit him and then activate it, it is this little buff right here, Undaunted Infiltrator. And it is very good. That's gonna buff our light and heavy attacks with our lightning staff by quite a lot. Now we're using an absorb stamina enchantment on here, not because we need the stamina, although it is somewhat helpful, but because it deals physical damage, which gives us a 20% chance with it to activate the minor breach or the sundered status effect, which is minor breach, giving us another 3000 penetration against the target that it activates on. That's very nice and helps us push up that penetration when we need it. The other set that we're going to be using is right here, and that is the Storm Master set. This is from Tempest Island, and it adds two lines of weapon critical, one line of weapon damage, very good stats for us. And when you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your light and heavy attacks deal an additional 1453 damage for 20 seconds. So if you fully charge up your heavy attack and you get a crit, you will get a buff for 20 seconds, adding a bunch of damage to your heavy attacks. So you want that critical chance as high as you can get within reason. The last set that we're using is on the back bar. That is our Vatashron's Greatsword. This gives you the Frenzied Momentum set, and while it is active, casting a stamina ability while in combat generates a stack of Frenzied Momentum for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 38 up to 5 times. So this adds an extra 150, 160 or so weapon damage. Upon reaching max stacks, your next heavy attack consumes all stacks and releases a violent explosion of energy around you, dealing 6,628 physical damage to enemies within 8 meters, scaling off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Now, this is not the best in slot back bar option. This is the simple bar option, okay? Because it is a 20 second buff. So you can cast it and swap. Cast it and swap. Or swap, cast, swap. Swap, cast, cast, swap. However, you don't have to do that one. Now, the damage that this adds, the 7,000 damage once you're buffed up, about 7,500 once you're fully buffed, uh, is not a big deal. It's not going to be the difference between a great build and an okay build. It adds less than 1% of your damage. However, it is something. It is a small buff. If you have it, why not use it? Unless you're a PvPer, you're not going to use it normally. So it's worth trying out. It's fun. The buff is weird to maintain, and I would recommend not trying to maintain it and just keeping Rally up at all times and just let it passively add some damage for you. It's fun. Now we're using the defending trait here because we want that extra spell and physical resistance on the back bar so that when we have our, it's the wrong ability, we have our rune down, we are at 24,000 spell resistance and 21,000 physical resistance. Remember the back bar is our defensive bar while the front bar is our offensive bar. So having that extra, those extra resistances is helpful. The Restore Stamina Enchantment is nice, again, because it gives you a chance at activating uh, that Minor Breach status effect. Alright, the last thing for us to go over is going to be the Rotation. So, with our Defensive Bar, we are going to start by pre-buffing on with Rally, and the Rune if you would like. It's not necessary, but it is helpful. So you go Rally, Rune, and then you're going to go to the Front Bar. Light attack, solar barrage, light attack, caltrops, light attack, ritual, heavy attack, sweeps, heavy attack, jabs, heavy attack, solar barrage, caltrops, and again, and then ultimate when it's ready. There we go, and here's the parse. Now, an important thing to know about this build is the heavy attacks. Now, normally you would think it would be better for me to just heavy attack, 
Let's buff up. Heavy attack. Heavy attack. Heavy attack over and over and over, right? That is what you think of when you think of a heavy attack build. We're just using the heavy attack as a spammable. But we are doing heavy attacks into jabs. Now, why are we doing heavy attacks into jabs? Well, if you notice, this is how long a heavy attack takes. Okay? And this is how long a jabs takes. But when you do them together, you can heavy attack. And if you push the button for jabs, you'll do it early. And the heavy attack takes less time. Watch that again. Okay, I'm gonna buff up, heavy attack into jabs, finishes early, and the heavy attack is faster. Here's a heavy attack. Here's a heavy attack, jabs, heavy attack. The jabs animation, even though it is a channeled animation, allows you to heavy attack before the animation is done which is the same, you can do a heavy a jabs and then immediately start one. Just like you can jabs and before it's over, you can cast your next ability. Just like you can do that, you can start your heavy attack channel, which is why you're not losing very much DPS at all from doing your heavy attacks that way. Last thing we're going to go through here is our champion points up here. So, in the green tree, you're just going to pick what you want. I personally like having Treasure Hunter as it gives you a chance to get set items from chests uh, in simple chests, which that's super nice. And then Steed's Blessing, giving you 20% movement speed out of sight of combat. These are super nice, I like them. And then also Wanderer, I like fast traveling as it makes things uh, much faster. So that 50% cost reduction is super nice. But other than that, pick up what you want. This whole line right here is good. Getting crafting inspiration is nice for the jewelry. Crafting specifically. And then obviously uh, these two are nice if you're trying to save some money. Uh, Rationer is nice as well, although I've not gone into it, and Liquid Efficiency is also pretty good. But, if you don't have the champion points to get here, no worries. Okay, let's get into the trees that matter for the build. In the Warfare tree, um, for reference, I will have a linked video from Skinny Cheeks with an updated guide on uh, champion points in the description. Check that out if you would like a more in-depth version of what I'm going to go through here. I am just going to give you the quick and dirty version. So we're going to start off with Tireless Discipline. You're going to put 10 points into here and then go into Piercing, put 20 points into here. And then this is your first slot level that you want. We're doing an enormous amount of damage with our light and heavy attacks. So we want to put in 50 points into Weapons Expert. This is new in the Blackwood patch and it adds 15% damage done to your light and heavy attacks. This is a giant buff for our lightning staff heavy attacks. After that, we would like to get deadly aim as this will boost our heavy attacks by a further 10%. And then continuing on, we'll get Thaumaturge, uh, which increases your damage over time, your damage with damage over time effects by another 10%. This also affects our lightning staff heavy attacks. So we're getting 10%, 10%, and 15% extra damage on our lightning staff heavy attacks. That is enormous. Feel free to put some points into uh, precision in order to get your crit chance up. However, I do like going into staving death earlier rather than later. Put 10 points here to unlock preparation. Put 20 points here to reduce your damage taken by 10%. I love this passive. Reducing that damage taken from uh, PVE monsters is huge and helps you stay alive a lot longer. Lastly, I like Duelist Rebuff. This is not what you'll normally see on any DPS build. However, in a solo build, I have found that reducing your damage taken by single target attacks by between two and 10% is quite significant, even on this build. You feel a lot tankier when you have this passive slotted. So again, our slottables are gonna be Duelist Rebuff, Thaumaturge, Weapons Expert, and Deadly Aim. All right, let's go on to the red tree. So in the red tree, we're gonna start out with 10 points into Sprinter, 
lower sprint cost, it's always nice. 16 points into hasty to increase this movement speed of our sprinting. This is nice for getting around the world. And then we're going to put 20 points into Hero's Vigor and 50 points into Siphoning Spells. You can actually slot either one of these. Perhaps Bloody Renewal would actually be better because we're already heavy attacking. However, I was worried about the Magicka Sustain if we were moving between fights a lot because we'll have to relay down our Ritual of Retribution, which costs almost 5,000 Magicka. So this is a, a nice buff to your Magicka Sustain when you're moving between fights. It's not super necessary. You can slot Bloody Renewal instead. However, I have found that Stamina Sustain is pretty easy with the potions, so either one is fine. If you wanted, you could probably do a different slottable than Siphoning Spells, regardless. And then we're also going to put 50 points into Boundless Vitality, 50 points into Ironclad, and 50 points into Rejuvenation to boost up our health, armor, and recoveries. This is the, the basic red tree setup. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up the video here. I'm going to play some Vodastron Hollows in the background to end the video off so you see that you can clear it on Veteran. You can trifecta this with this build if you are a better player than I am. I am still working on that trifecta, but I will get there eventually with one of my weird builds. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe. I would super appreciate it. Most of the views that I have are from non-subscribers, so that'd be great. And if you like the build, let me know if you are going to try this kind of build on a Dragon Knight or a Nightblade or a Warden or another class. I am super interested to hear your theory crafting, and I love to theory craft in the comments. So have a great day, night, morning whatever time of day it is for you.
we did not summon such a creature for this challenge. Batashran's rights now end. You did more than we expected. Well done.